All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back, and our theme for today is health and fitness. We'll do Unit 7E today. All right, Unit 7E, we're looking at health and fitness still, and our topic for today is, as we go back, Are you okay? That's the topic for today. Now, most of the time, some of our friends or family members feel ill and we need to ask them out of concern. Maybe you have a friend or a loved one that's not feeling so well. So you ask them how they are doing and you ask them because you are concerned about their well-being. Now, this does not show any form of weakness, but it only shows that you care for the person and you want to help the person in any possible way that you can. This is just to show that you are indeed a good friend and you want to help. All right, let's look at the first. Um, if you look at Unit 7E, the title for today is Are You Okay? And we're looking at aches and pains. Now at the bottom, you'll see seven pictures of girls and boys and they have different symptoms each. And if you look at the picture, You'll see number one, there's a boy holding his stomach, and he has a stomach ache, obviously. Number two, you'll see a boy holding his head, and this boy does not look well at all. Seems like he has a headache, and yes, he has a headache. Number three, we see a girl, and she's holding her mouth or her cheek, and we can see that she has a ribbon tied around her head, illustrating the fact that she's not well at all and she has a toothache. Number four, we see a boy and he seems to be rubbing his nose and it looks or appears as if he is not well at all and he has a cold or flu. And the last one, we, not the last one, but picture number four, we see a guy that's holding in his head, similar to picture number two, but here we see some sweat drops and we can immediately see that this guy is not well at all and he seems to be having a fever. Picture number five is a girl. Looking at the picture you can see immediately that there's something wrong. At the expression of her face, looking at her throat, you can see that something is not right at all and it is red or inflamed. And picture number seven, we see a boy that's holding, that's coughing and we can see by the stripes here and he's clothed in thick clothes with a scarf and he seems as if he's also having a cough and something is not right at all. Okay, so looking at these pictures of aches and pains, my question to you, have you ever had? Now I can tell you from the word go that I've experienced all of these symptoms before and the worst one for me is, I would say, having a cold and flu. Well, stomach aches also falls amongst one of the symptoms or elements that I do not want to have. So one of these seven, um, some of these uh, that you can see here, the boy holding his stomach as well as the boy holding his head, we can see that they are not okay at all. Looking at aches and pains, my question to you, have you ever had? And maybe, maybe not. Some of you may have been so lucky that you have not experienced some of these ailments or symptoms. Well, I'm not that lucky at all because I've experienced all of them. So let's go on to our next page because I'm sure that most of you are quite familiar with the pictures and what's going on with all of them. Right, so use the phrases below and the words below to ask and answer questions. So, first of all, we see a boy that has a stomach ache. So what question can we ask for the boy that has a stomach ache? Well, for one, uh, what's wrong with you? That's the first question that I will ask. And judging from the response, I would say that the boy would say that he has a stomach ache. And then the response that I would have for this boy would be, well, why don't you go to a doctor? Uh, do you think that this boy can see a dentist? 
as the first one suggests, and the answer is no. There is indeed nothing wrong with the boy's mouth or teeth, and you can see that he's holding his stomach, so we refer to a doctor, and we know that a doctor and a dentist, that both of them are doctors but have specializations in different fields. So, looking at some of the words, take an aspirin, take some vitamin C, have a hot drink, take some medicine, take some cough syrup. Now, if you look at the pictures and I give you the second bullet point that says take an aspirin, which one of these do you think that needs these pictures? Do you think they need to take an aspirin? Well, what is an aspirin used for? An aspirin has multiple effects on the body and I think one of them is if you take an aspirin you can use it for toothache as well as a fever. Most commonly used for a fever is vitamin C because it has antibodies to help you build your immune system. All right? Have a hot drink. When do we tell someone to have a hot drink? What should be the symptoms of what should be wrong with this person that we should tell this person to take a hot drink? Well, the only common thing that I can think of is a sore throat. That is when I'll tell someone to take a hot drink, have some lemon or ginger, because these contain antibodies that helps the body to cure all of these diseases or some of these diseases if you can put them. All right, take some medicine. You take medicine for, I would say, all of these symptoms because medicine would help. Or, as in the case of the boy with the toothache, I would say that this boy indeed, well, can take some medicine, but if the conditions are so extreme, I would say that this boy needs to go to a dentist to extract the tooth, and that's not very pleasant at all. And the last one, take some cough syrup. Well, cough syrup, when do we take some cough syrup? Which picture do you think do we need to take cough syrup? And that is picture number seven. All right, for someone that's coughing or for someone that has flu and he coughs a lot or his nose is running, well, we suggest that you can take some cough syrup. All right, I'll play the first one for you. I have a stomach ache. Have you had a hot drink? Okay, so now A, I have a stomach ache. Have you ever had a hot drink? So use the phrases below and the words below to ask and answer questions, right? So let's see, picture number two. I have a headache. Have you taken an aspirin? Okay, so how have do you we seen ask a doctor? and answer some questions for picture number two? Well, we see the boy, I have a headache. And what's the response? Have you taken an aspirin or seen a doctor? We know that this means forward slash or it means or so if the question is i have a headache the response would be have you taken an aspirin or seen a doctor all right number two i have a toothache have you taken an aspirin have you seen a dentist right. what do you think the question and the response would be for number two okay i have a toothache and the response, have you taken an aspirin or see a dentist? Remember, you can see a doctor for a toothache, toothache, but the doctor will refer you to a dentist at the end of the day because that is the dentist's field of specialization. And when I talk about a field of specialization, I'm only talking about the fact is that a dentist works with teeth, so they would know more about the teeth and the cavities and what's going on and causes tooth and eggs. Right, number three. I have a cold. I have the flu. Have you right, taken so some vitamin C? Some of the questions and the answers that we can ask. Okay. I have a cold or the flu and some of the responses that you can say is have you taken some vitamin C? Another response that you can ask is how bad is it and did you see a doctor? We can also prescribe the fact that you can take an aspirin or see a doctor as well. Alright, picture number four. I have a fever. 
Have you seen a doctor? Alright, can you think of a question and a response? So we say, I have a fever, and the response, have you seen a doctor? And why can we not see a dentist for a fever? Because a dentist does not specialize in this field. Alright, let's look at picture number six. I have a sore throat. Have you had a hot drink? Have you taken right. some medicine? And what's some of the questions that you can ask? Or what is the girl saying? I have a sore throat. So the response would be, have you had a hot drink or taken some medicine? The other response that you can have is that you take some vitamin C for your throat as well. Or that you take some ginger or garlic or honey. Last picture that we have. I have a cough. Have you taken some cough syrup? Alright, so what do you think that the boy is saying? I have a cough and definitely we can see the boy is coughing. And what the response can be for this question is, have you taken some cough syrup? That's some of the questions that we can ask. Another question that we can ask him is, did you take some vitamin C because vitamin C is good in preventing cold and flu? Or lastly, what can we still suggest is that you see a doctor or take an aspirin. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, expressing concern. When we talk about expressing concern, we're talking about expressing care or how you ask someone how they feel. Now listen and repeat and pay attention to the intonation. Remember when we talk about intonation, listen to teacher's voice. When teacher's voice go up, the teacher's voice go down. Now pay attention to the intonation of some of these questions. When do you hear the words or some of the phrases go up or when does it go down? So pay close attention to it. Right. All right, let's go on. Okay, listen and repeat. Pay attention to the intonation. Number one. Are you okay? Okay, that you listen to the intonation. Are you okay? Right. Where does the intonation fall? Is it on are you okay or are you okay or are you okay? Listen to where the voice or the intonation goes up. Number two, you don't look well. You don't look well. Okay, listen to how she asks the question. Do you listen to how she gives the response? You don't look well. Okay, number three. I feel awful. I feel awful. Right? Number four. What's wrong? Okay, we say what's wrong or do we say what's wrong? Right, number five. You should see a doctor. Okay, listen to the intonation. You should see a doctor or you should see a doctor or you should see a doctor. Listen to the intonation to where the tone goes up. And lastly, I feel terrible. Listen to where the word goes up. I feel terrible. Alright, I feel terrible. Alright, these are the concerns that you express when someone does not feel well. Let's go on to our next slide. Okay, so here we see a picture of three girls. One of the girls does not seem to be feeling well at all. So what can you take from this picture? Well, let's read and go through the dialogue and see um, and hear what is going on so that we can have an idea and then we'll ask some questions later on. Okay, so listen and read the dialogue with me. Hey Jane, are you okay? You don't look well. No, I feel awful. What's wrong? I have a headache. Have you taken an aspirin? Yes, but
but it didn't help. Well, then you should see a doctor. I guess you're right. I feel terrible. All right, so what can we gather from our dialogue? Number one is two people are talking. Now, we do not know who Jane or Anne is given uh, the picture that we have at hand because we th see three girls, okay? What we do know is one of them has to be Jane because Jane is not feeling well. So, let's see. Jane, are you okay? We know that from the dialogue that Jane has a headache. And what is the response? What does Anne tell Jane to do? Uh, Anne suggests that Jane should take an aspirin. Uh, but Jane's response is a little bit familiar to what we have nowadays. Yes, but it didn't help. Well, then you should see a doctor. Why doesn't... Or why does she not refer Jane to a dentist? Because there's nothing wrong with Jane's mouth or teeth, but there's something wrong with Jane's headache. And someone that specializes in the body is a doctor. And then the response of Jane is, I guess you're right, I'm feeling terrible. All right, let's move on. Okay, so what's wrong with Jane? And what is Anne's advice? Do we know what's wrong with Jane? Given the fact from the dialogue, we can see that Jane has a headache, okay? And she feels terrible. So what's the response or the advice that Anne gives? Anne advises her to take an aspirin and to see a doctor. Pretty much what I would suggest that Anne should do as well. Some of the things that you can also suggest to your friend to show some, some concern is, well, Jane, you can have some vitamin C because it boosts the body. You can have some honey. You can take an aspirin. These are just some of the things that you can advise to your friend when they do not feel well, given the fact that you know what you're actually talking about. All right. Okay, say these sentences below in your own languages and then read the dialogue aloud in pairs. Now, since I do not know these sentences in Vietnamese, I will give it to you to practice. And then when we are done with all of this, we can go to the workbook and practice further in our workbook. But looking at some of the questions, are you okay? You don't look well. I feel awful. What's wrong you should see a doctor and i feel terrible well say these sentences in your own language because i do not know what they sound like in vietnamese and then practice and then we can go on to our next part okay we will skip this part because this is the part where you act with a friend if you have someone that knows English very well, I would like and I would advise you to practice with them and I would advise you to practice your English so that your speaking can improve and you ask questions as if the one person there's something wrong and you will be the friend that supports and you can even switch roles to support each other. All right, pronunciation. Now, this is something that teacher preached a long time to you and you all should know it by now. We're looking at, if you look at these special characters, do you still remember what they are? For some of you, you might not know and for some, these are, we're looking at phonetics and we're looking at the sounds that these characters make. So how do we use these characters? Well, they are good at helping you how to pronounce certain words. So if we listen to the first two phonetics, uh. okay, did you hear that? Uh. Right, if you look, listen to the second one, uh. and again, uh. okay, so we see we have the uh sound and we have the o uh sound. Okay, we have the a uh sound and we have the o uh sound. Two different sounds that we encounter. Now, first question that I have is o uh, cough. Do we use it for number one or for number two? A uh, or o? Uh, I'll give you a chance to think. 
Remember, this sound is a, ah, and this sound is o, o. Oh. Okay, a, ah, o. Oh. Right. If we go on, number one. All right. I hope you guys guessed it. Second one, color. Okay. Listen to how did you say color? What sound do you hear? A ah, or oh, o? Oh. All right. Color. Ah, ah. Okay, third sound, cut. And we see that the word is cut. Do we say cut, ah, or cut, oh? Right, you've guessed it. And the last one, come. Do we say come or come? Right, I'll give you a chance. Okay, and the answer is ah. We use the first one. Okay, we have four words again. Wrong. Wrong, flood, mud. Okay, wrong, ah, wrong, oh, flood, ah, and mud, ah. Okay, so what we see here is for number one or number two, wrong, and that falls under category number one. Number two, we have wrong, okay, because of the oh sound. Number three, we have flood ah and mud ah all right you can practice with other english words as well i would advise that you do practice as well and just practice some of these words on your own and pause before you practice it so that you can be familiar with how they sound and how you say it all right, that's all for our book and we can go to our uh, workbook. If you can take out your workbook 7E and you can do that first before we go through it together and then I will show the answers at the end. All right. All right. Let's start with our workbook on unit 7E. We look at vocabulary. Okay, what's wrong with each person? Here we have seven people. Number one, John. Number two, Anne, Sue, Bill, Tony, Pete, and Steve. Looking at the pictures, we can see that John is holding his stomach, and we can conclude John has A, and the first letter is given, so we can conclude that John, indeed, there's something wrong with his stomach so we can conclude that John has a stomach ache right number two here we see Anne and Anne doesn't feel well and we see Anne has a first letter starts with an F so we can conclude then that Anne has what a fever right number three Sue has a and we can, if we look at the picture, Sue is holding her head, we, we can conclude that something is wrong with Sue's head, we can say, Sue has a headache. Right, number four, Bill has the, we can see that Bill is sneezing and there's something wrong with Bill's nose, so the first letter is given if, and we can conclude that Bill has the flu. Right, number five, Tony has A, and we can see the first letter is given, there's Tony. Now remember the bandage or the piece of cloth wrapped around his head, and we can see he's holding his cheek, we can conclude that Tony has A, toothache. Right, number six, Pete has A, there's Pete, and we can see that Pete is holding his throat. And something is definitely wrong with his throat so we can conclude that Pete has a sore throat and number seven Steve has a starting with letter C we can see Steve is doing something with his mouth and it seems as if he's having a sneeze or is that a cough well I leave that to you to decide and we can see that Steve has a cough. Alright, 
I hope you guys did that first before teacher did that together with you because I want you to do this first and then we all can do it together. All right. Everyday English. Match the phrase to the correct responses. I want you guys to do this first and you can pause the video. Okay, we see number one, the phrase to the correct response. Some of the phrases, hey Jean, are you okay? Number two, what's wrong? Number three, have you taken any medicine? And number four, you should see the doctor. All right. Response A, I have a fever. Response B, I suppose you're right. Response C, no, I haven't. And response D, no, I feel awful. All right, now let's match the responses to the correct numbers. So number one, hey Jean, are you okay? A, B, C, or D? We see that it is D. No, I feel awful. That's the correct response. All right, number two, what's wrong? What do you think the response is to that? And the correct response is I have a fever. All right, number three, have you taken any medicine? What do you think the correct response to that is A, B, C, or D? And we see that it is C. No, I haven't and then the last one you should see the doctor and the correct response to that would be I suppose you're right okay moving on from everyday English let's go on replace the phrases in bold with phrases from the list okay and number one we see the phrases in bold is don't feel very well number two the phrase in bold, what's the problem? Number three, I think you need two. And number four, that's true. So replace the phrase in bold with the phrase from the list. We see what's wrong. You should feel awful and you're right. Okay, so number one, I don't feel very well. And the correct response for number one is I feel awful. Number two, oh dear. What's the problem? And the correct response to number two is, oh dear, what's wrong? Okay, number three, I think you need to see a doctor. I think you need to. And the correct response to that is, you should see a doctor. Right, and the last one, that's true, I suppose. Replace the phrase in bold with the phrase from the list and that is That's true You're right, I suppose Right going on to our listening section. I will play the listening We have four pictures and we will match the pictures with what the guy on the audio is saying to the correct number Okay, so I will play the audio for you to listen to and then we will do it together. Unit 7E Exercise 4 Page 49 Hi Emma. I just called to ask if you're okay. Someone told me that you broke your leg. Hi. No, I didn't break it but I fell and twisted my ankle playing tennis yesterday afternoon. Mark! How are you? I heard you fell during baseball practice and hit your head. No, I just scraped my elbows. Let me see. Wow, I'm glad I don't play baseball. It looks pretty painful. I cut my finger today. I had to go to the nurse's office. So, Tony, have you always been into sports? Well, I've raced bikes since I was 12. I love the excitement of winning a race and I enjoy the speed. I'm also quite good at judo, but I prefer to be outside in the countryside. My sister is a professional ice skater, but I can't even stand up in a pair of skates. 
Where has Sue gone this evening? Basketball practice? No, dear. That was last night. She was going to watch Stephen play soccer, but then she remembered that she promised to meet Jane for a game of tennis. All right, let's go on. Listen and choose the correct picture. So what happened to Emma? We have three pictures. Emma is holding her ankle. Number two, B, Emma has bleeding. And number three, we see that Emma's knee, there's something wrong. So what happened to Emma, A, B, or C? And the correct answer is A. All right, number two, what's wrong with Mark? Picture A, B, or C something with his elbow, his head, or his finger, and the correct response to that is A. And then, what's Tony's favorite sport? We have A, B, or C, karate, cycling, or roller skating, or ice skating, and that we see that it is B, cycling. And the last one, where has Sue gone? Is it soccer, basketball, or tennis? And the correct response is C, tennis. All right, that's all from my side for workbook 7E. And see you again and hope you enjoyed the lesson. And before I go, I will put the answer sheets on for you first. And then after that, we can do lesson 7F. Right, this is the answer key for workbook 7E and I want you guys to press pause and you can fill it in but remember to do it first before you look at the answers so that you can have some um, activity to do and then see you on the next lesson on 7F. Goodbye.